And let's take a big inhale up. Ah, oh, stretch it out. Exhale it out. On your next inhale, I want you to really lengthen yourself way up to the sky. Up, 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 up. And exhale it out. And let's do that one more time. Big inhale up. Lengthen out and exhale it out. Let's get that transverse abdominus warmed up. Okay, bring your feet under your hips. Take your arms up over your head and you're just relaxed hanging out here. On go, you're going to reach up as high as you can possibly reach and we're going to hold for a couple of seconds and then we're going to relax. So start with me with your arms over your head, just relaxed and go. I want you to use all of your might to lengthen yourself out as long as humanly possible. It's really aggressive here. Reach, 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 reach like your life depends on it. Relax it out and let's come into a spinal twist. So we're going to do that exercise again. That transverse abdominus exercise is one of my favorite preparatory moves because it teaches the muscle called your transverse abdominus, which works like a girdle around your torso. So transverse abdominus brings your abdomen inward to support your back. And so you know all those times when you think about sucking your tummy in, um, you know, in an effort to, let's say, feel skinnier or to pull your abs in or to show your ab definition? That is your transverse abdominus. And this reaching exercise really helps to get that muscle firing. So let's do it again. You're going to take your feet about hip distance apart. Take your feet hip distance apart, naturally reach up over your head, and go. Reach up as high as you can possibly reach. Super, super, super high. Reach, 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 reach. Lengthen the space from your rib cage to your hips. You might feel some muscles in your back activate. That's proof that you're doing it correctly. Reach, 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 reach. It's a little weird to breathe. Just make sure you're not holding your breath and relax it down. One more spinal twist. On our spinal twist, I want you activating, contracting your glute on the leg that you're turning away from. So right glute, left glute, right glute. What that does is it creates a stable anchor for your pelvis so that you can get better and safer spinal rotation. And just letting your arms swing around because it feels good. It just releases some of that stickiness through the body. And relax. Let's do that reach one more time. Feet under your hips. Arms naturally over your head. And go. This time, I want you to reach even longer. Really lengthen out that space. Visualize if you could lift up every single vertebrae off of each other, lengthening out your spine as much as possible. It's going to create a little bit of difficulty in your breathing. That's the goal. Feeling that muscle contract inward through your tummy and relax it out. Take your feet separated and take a look down. Make sure that your feet are truly parallel. Bend your knees, stick your butt back, and let's come side to side. Really press back on your hips, sitting deeply in the leg, and notice how fabulous it feels. Does this not feel like so good? Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> this is one of those exercises you really should be doing every single day, really as a mobility um, exercise, but also just to keep your body open and fluid and activated throughout the day. You can also use it before any kind of activity. As this starts to feel good, as you kind of get into the groove here, we're going to come deeper, reaching all the way across the toe. Now you can move faster or slower than me if you want. Sit heavy onto the heel of the foot, actually both feet, but really press into the heel of the foot that you're pushing off of. So left heel, right heel, left heel, push away. Drive your heel into the ground. Keep your toes relaxed. Sit deeply. One of my best moves to get you prepared for the workout. One more. And let me show you one of my other best moves. 
to get you prepared for a workout. <laughs> One of my other super favorite exercises. Feet together. Big reach up. Take a step back into a modified lunge. Big reach up. Other leg lunge. Alternating your lunging sides. Just dipping down a little halfway. Letting your back knee bend. Once you get really comfortable with this, we're going to make it bigger. Now, you can stay here and continue doing it just like this if you prefer, or we're going to make it bigger by coming to a full runner's lunge. This might be the Mac Daddy of them all, honesty, honestly. Like, this is such a good move to increase your heart rate, boost your mood, fire up your glutes, open up the mobility of the hips, activate the hamstrings and the quads. What else does this do? I mean, it's just such a good exercise. If you add a big reach here, you're also getting more of that transverse abdominus activation. Big reach. Heavy on your front heel. When you step forward, make sure it's your front heel bringing you forward. You're really pressing into the front heel there to activate your glute. Big reach. One more. Ah, and let's get every other little muscle in your leg warmed up. Bring your feet together. Bend your knees. Find something immobile to stare at. Bring your weight onto your left leg. Keep your left knee bent, okay? Sorry, right, this is your right leg. Keep your right knee bent. I'm actually keeping both your knees bent here, but the leg that you're standing on, keep that knee bent. Find your balance. Once you have your balance, I want you to move your eyes and your head around your space in an effort to throw your balance off. We are doing this intentionally to throw your balance off, okay? Because as your body has to compensate, okay, guys, I'm trying to give you a heads up. My allergies, my allergies are so bad right now being in California, so I might have to sneeze a few times. Bear with me. Um, when we are intentionally throwing your balance off, that is what gets this leg so functional. It's so good. Relax and do the same thing on the other side. So I realize, start with a bent knee, bring your weight onto your left, find your balance, and then look around. I realize this probably to an outsider looks like such a silly exercise, but can you feel it? It's incredible. If you keep your ankle and your knee bent and you're looking around, look up, look down, look all around, look everywhere. You're going to feel the arch of this leg grab. And that is one of the best reasons we do this exercise. You're going to feel your glute medius, which is a glute hip stabilizer. You're going to feel it fire up. You're going to feel your quads fire up. This literally, if you never work out with me ever again, this is right here, one of the best gifts that I've just given you for the rest of your life. If you practice this exercise every single day, you will never fall. You will never break an ankle. You'll never have knee issues. Not really, but it really does reduce your risk of all of those issues in life. Okay, one more big inhale. Up. Exhale it out. Bring your hands back behind you. Interlock. Extend them back. Press your chest forward. I want to open up your chest a little bit because we are doing legs and arms today. So when we're doing an upper body arm workout, I like to open up the shoulders in this position because we want the shoulders to naturally release back in space whenever we are really working on our shoulders. Let me give you a quick tutorial. When we're doing our upper body exercises, you're going to hear me say shoulders back and down. Most people are hanging out here with their shoulders. Make sure you're bringing your shoulders back in space and down in space. One of the biggest mistakes I see women make all the time is their shoulders are up here and they're forward and they're doing their exercises from here. 
And that is very different from shoulders back and shoulders down when we do this exercise. Okay, shoulders back and down is the second gift I'm going to give you to make the rest of your life better. Let's get started. Grab your circular hip band. Let's start with some lateral band steps. Okay, you're going to step into your band, stretch your band, then step through, place it at your knees. That makes it a whole lot easier to get your band in place. Neutral positioning is band just above your knees. If your band is a little too easy, take your band below your knees. If your band is really heavy and stiff, take it a little higher up towards your hips. That changes where the resistance is on this lever, and we're going to do some lateral band stepping. Start with your feet together. Feet together. Sit down so everything is bent. Stick your butt back with a natural curvature in your lower back, and let's go. I want you to take 15 steps here. 15 steps, 15. Please count it out. If you're new to my workout or if you've stumbled upon this workout on YouTube or my website, please know that you, my friend, are a big girl. You don't need me to count your repetitions for you, okay? You're responsible for your body. You got to count your own repetitions out because I am not to be trusted with repetitions. And there's a reason for that. When you hit your 15, come on back. And the reason for that is you need me far more for my coaching and my guidance and my teaching of the exercises. You don't need me to count one, two, three, four for you. Those days are gone. That was way back when I was with Exercise TV. My producer used to ride me to really get my repetitions right. And I was always so annoyed. So I hired an assistant who was off camera to count the repetitions for me. And that's because you can count your own repetitions. You don't need me to do that. Okay, grab your dumbbells, leave your band on. Dumbbells, here we go, feet together. We're going into upright row. Now we're gonna be working in supersets today if you're new for my workout. Two exercises, back to back with no rest in between. This is our first superset. When we get to our second superset, I'll show you what we're going to be doing ahead of time so that if you want to do three supersets and make the workout a little bit harder, you can. Okay. Please count 12 repetitions for most exercises. Other than these lateral band steps, I'm having you do a higher repetition on the lateral band step, but everything else, I want you doing 12 repetitions where repetitions number 11 and 12 are really challenging. So you got to grab yourself some heavier dumbbells to make sure 12 reps on all other exercises are challenging. We take a short little break. We're going to do these two exercises again. Unless you want a harder workout today, you're going to take just a short, maybe 10 second break, then go in. Now remember, listen up. The whole point of taking a little bit of a rest phase is so that you can work harder during the set. This is not a cardio workout. This is a strength-based workout. So I want you to take a little bit of a rest so that when we go back to set two, you can work harder. I don't want you fatigued cardiovascularly. I want you fatigued muscularly. And on that note, Let's go for set number two. If that first set of lateral band steps felt comfortable, grab yourself a heavier band or move your band below your knees. So because I'm not at home, I don't have all of my exercise equipment. I'm making do with what I have. This band is a little easy for me, so I'm going to take it below my knees. That makes it harder. Bend your knees, sit. Neutral, natural curvature arch in your lower back. Pop that booty back and let's go. Pop your booty back. Keep your chest up, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, a couple days ago, I was just perusing YouTube and checking out what other fellow fitness experts are doing on YouTube. And I came across someone who I actually really do respect. Um, and she had a video tutorial on something. She was demonstrating an exercise very similar to this. And she was like, keep your back flat. Keep your back perfectly flat. And if you've worked out with me before, you know, I hate that phraseology because it's not accurate. No one's back is flat. Whoever came up with that saying, your back is not flat. If you've ever looked at an anatomy chart, the spine has all kinds of curvature to it and it's designed that way. So on this exercise, you want to keep 
a neutral, natural curvature in your lower back because that's how you're designed. Now, if you're someone who overarches your lower back, you can soften that arch, but you do not want a flat back. You do not want a flat back. Flat back that's the fastest way to a back injury. 15 on these, right? And relax. Let's go in for a second set of upright rows, and then you can take your band off. Upright row. If that first set was easy, you're going to add a pause at the top. If you've got yourself some nice heavy weights, Heidi Brenner, you're not going to pause at the top. You're going to get in and get out. If you've also had any kind of a shoulder issue or shoulder injury and you're using heavier weights and you want to get stronger, you pop in and out. So it's in and out on this exercise, in and out. And for the rest of us who have healthy shoulders and or moderate weight loads, it's a pause at the top to really improve the time under tension on the muscle. Okay, and to improve or actually enhance an isometric contraction at the top. That's why I am such a proponent of adding that pause. Big pause, 12 reps, and relax. Go ahead, drop your weights, take a band off. Moving on to our next superset. We've got a plie and press, one dumbbell. Ideally, it would be a heavier dumbbell. Let me show you the next two exercises. Toes turned open. We've got a plie and press. Plie and press paired with a band tricep extension. Let me show you real fast. Here's my handled resistance band. Throw it out in front of you. Step on it two-thirds of the way. Handle behind you. Both hands in the handle. And you're going to extend up like that. So you want to make sure that you're holding your handle with both hands. I tend to let my pinkies hang out. And you're extending straight up from there, keeping your shoulders back and down. Cool. Let's do it. Grab your heavier dumbbell. Plie, squat, and press. 12 repetitions. Grab a heavier dumbbell. Or if you've got lighter dumbbells like I do today, you can double, double them up. Toes are turned open. Here we go. Sit and press. Now, let me tell you, the name of the game here isn't necessarily to sit super, super, super deep. Over time, that's a good goal. And please know, because of my inherent and natural strengths, I'm able to go pretty deep on this exercise. That's just... For a number of reasons, but really my hip structure and my lifelong commitment to working out allows me to do that. But you don't have to go super deep. Also, the goal is not to touch the floor with your dumbbells. Now, I realize on video it might look like I'm touching the floor with the dumbbells, but I'm not. I'm actually a good four to six inches off the ground with my dumbbells, okay? The goal is to sit as deeply as it feels natural for you. And then maybe just a hair deeper. So wherever you feel natural in your depth here, okay, then you go a hair deeper on those plie spots. Okay, here we go. Second exercise. Hold on. Just want to fix my camera. Second exercise. We got tricep extension. Lay that band out in front of you. Step on it with your whole foot. Hands up back behind, feet together, or you can stagger your feet totally up to you. Either position, keep your knees soft. The reason you want to keep your knees soft pretty much always is because it unlocks your hips. How about that? A lot of people don't know that. So when you soften your knees with a slight bend, it unlocks the hips. And that unlocks your spine, <laughs> and that unlocks your shoulders. And this exercise is, um, let's call it, um, you know, focused on, it's not a shoulder exercise, but obviously the shoulder joint is involved here. So this exercise just really incorporates the shoulder joint so that we can hit the triceps. And if you know me, you know I love this exercise. It's so good. So good. So here too, you don't want a flat back. 
that's a bad idea. Notice how I have a little bit of an arch in my lower back. You want to keep your natural neutral arch. Short break, going into our second set. How did that plie squat feel? If that plie squat felt good for you, you want to go a little heavier, okay? Or you can pause at the bottom, or you can do heavier weight loads. And if you are limited by your weight that you have, like I am, you could also do have more repetitions. But really in a perfect world, I want this to be a strength workout. As you know, I help women use strength training and nutrition to transform their body and their life. and the best way to do that is to really use more challenging weight loads so it can make you stronger, okay? So those last two repetitions really should be challenging. And if they're not, I want you using heavier weight loads. If you don't have that option, you're going to pause, move more slowly, or do more repetitions, okay? You could also play with moving faster to make the exercise harder. But really, when we're doing um, strength training exercises, it's actually harder to do them more slowly. All right, you ready for the second set? Toes are turned open. We got a plie squat here. Knees soft. Press those knees back. And here we go. We're going to sit and big extend. Sit and big reach. Ooh, so good. Big reach. You got 12 reps. Sitting nice and deep. Big reach. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Here with a bit of a hip tuck under. Hip tuck under. Oh, that feels so good. It really un undoes, undoes. <laughs> That's right, undoes. I don't know. It really releases the hips, kind of like neutralizes any immobility that happens from the week. Big reach. 12 reps here. And then we're going to go into that second set of tricep extension. Big reach, 12 reps. And let's do it. Tricep extension. You could do this exercise with a dumbbell if you prefer, or if you don't have a band, or if you're just not loving it. But I really do love the band because a band is what we call variable resistance. So when you're at the top right here with a band, the band is exerting more resistance at the top than it is at the bottom. And so you get, this exercise is like extra good for the triceps because you're getting one kind of resistance here and a different resistance at the top. You're getting maximal resistance from the band at the top. So good. 12 reps, pausing at the bottom and or the top, really whatever feels effective for you. Triceps are really interesting because you can pause in either position for triceps, and it really provides a different kind of stimulus. I tend to like a pause um, when the arms are lengthened on tricep exercises like this because the muscle is then in a shortened position when you're taxing it. But there's also, let's call it a value, pausing at the bottom when your tricep is actually in a lengthened position. Cool? Superset number three. Let me show you. We are going to do a squat and press. And then we're going to, well, I'll show you. <laughs> How about instead of just mimicking it, let me show you. Squat and press. Feet are separated. Toes are turned open. Knees are soft. Dumbbells are at your side. So we're doing a squat and press. So remember, this is legs and arms. So I'm giving you a lot of arms today. Your arms are going to feel so good tomorrow. Squat and press paired with a 45 degree hammer curl. So you're going to start with your dumbbells, with your palms facing each other with your dumbbells. And then what you're going to do is you're going to open your arms out at about 45 degrees. And then we're going to do a 45 degree hammer curl. Okay. Shoulders back and down like crazy on bicep exercises. Bicep and tricep exercises work much better when you really keep your shoulders back and down. It's everything. That's gift number three that I give to you today. Um, if you never work out with me again, I leave you with these gifts. Okay, so we got squat and press. You ready? Grab a challenging weight load for 12 repetitions. Toes are slightly open. 
toes are slightly, slightly open, but your body weight is on your heels, knees soft, reach your hips back and extend those arms up over your head. 12 reps. Ooh. Oh, does that not feel good? I tell you, gift number four for today. Who knew you were going to get so many gifts today? <laughs> gift number four. A lot of times people will be doing exercises like this and it's challenging and therefore it's kind of uncomfortable. And I've had clients in the past, you know, kind of moan and groan about the physical challenge of these exercises. And the truth is, if you can learn to love the discomfort, your body's going to change. That's the secret, is to really learning how to embrace the discomfort that comes along with body transformation. Because changing your body is not an easy endeavor. It's just not. It's going to induce some discomfort. Shoulders back and down. Bring your dumbbells up so that your palms are facing each other. That's, a, that's called a hammer curl position, technically called neutral position. Then open out at about 45 degrees. Here we go. Hammer curl at 45 degrees. Shoulders are back and down like crazy. Chin is parallel to the ground. Now, I have a tendency to drop my chin a lot because that helps me bring my shoulders back. But technically, you want your chin parallel to the ground so that your spine is in neutral alignment at all times. Technically, you're going to be stronger when you've got your head and neck in neutral alignment. So, pause at the top. Give me a big squeeze there. You got 12 repetitions. If this is not challenging, this is one of those exercises where it's super productive to go heavier. Some exercises, you got to be careful going heavier because they're more complicated and there's a higher risk of injury. But this is one of those exercises that, provided you're keeping your shoulders back and down, this is one of those exercises that's very low risk of injury. Very low. So this is one of those exercises you can really challenge yourself with weight loads safely and get those arms looking hot for any time you're wearing a tank top or a bathing suit or short sleeves or whatever it may be. Cool, short little break. And then we're going to do our second set of these two exercises, squat and press, bicep curl, before we go on to our fourth superset. As we go through the workout, if you have any questions, I got my cup of coffee today please post them in the chat box. After the workout, I will review any questions. We will say hello. And if you want to stick around for the mini, the, the walking lunge mini workshop, please do because you know we will be doing some walking lunges today. All right, let's go. Second set, squat and press. If your first set was comfortable, grab yourself some heavier dumbbells or pause at the bottom or do more reps if you have to. Sit, big press. Reach your hips back. Really reach those hips back here. Super, super important. That's a big part of this exercise. Keeping that neutral curvature in your lower back at all times, as I talk about. Keeping your natural, neutral curvature in your lower and technically your upper back. But I will tell you, knowing how to keep an ideal curvature in your upper back is a lot more complicated. So let's just start with the lower back. And you might be wondering, but how do I know if I've got a good arch in my lower back? And the truth is, that's when you want to use your mirror and start to learn your own proprioceptive control on where your body is during exercises. Mirrors are super important, okay? And the truth is, I am now able, after 30 years of strength training, to work out without a mirror because I know where my body is. But that only happened after 30 years <laughs> of watching myself in a mirror and knowing what, it, what does it feel like with my eyes closed to have my lower back in a neutral, natural curvature? You have to learn what it feels like 
if you were to have your eyes closed. That's called proprioception. Chest is up, shoulders back and down, chin parallel to the ground. Really bring those shoulders back, really press those shoulders down. You can pause at the top to improve that isometric contraction if you'd like. Oh, big squeeze. 12 repetitions unless your weight is light. You could do more. And short break. Let me show you our next superset. I think it's number four. Um, today's the first time in a long time I didn't write my workout app down. I just kept it in my head. So, Heidi, you can keep, keep me in check. This is our fourth superset, which means we need one more. So if I get off, you can just let me know. If there's any technical issues or if anybody needs to talk to me, you can just unmute yourself and talk in my ear and I will hear you. Next superset. We are doing another one of my absolute favorite exercises. Um, one single dumbbell, okay? Feet together. We are doing a reverse lunge. Reverse lunge with a press. You can make it a little harder if you like by lifting your knee here if you want. And I, I think I would almost rather have you go a little heavy with your dumbbell so that you don't have to worry about balancing in this position. Second exercise is shoulders back and down, feet together, dumbbell, side raise. Keep a slight bend in your elbows and keep your wrists truly straight. You don't want your wrists to drop. Keep your wrists perfectly, perfectly straight for that dumbbell side raise. Dumbbell side raise for most women is going to be around three to five pounds. Some people will do seven or eight pounds. Beyond eight pounds on this dumbbell side raise, you really want to make sure you have good technique because it's rare that I find women doing this exercise above eight pounds where they've got excellent technique. So just make sure you check your technique. First exercise, single dumbbell. Um, you're going to be stepping back on the leg same side that you're holding your dumbbell. So if you're holding your dumbbell in your left arm, you are going to step back on your left leg. Cool? From here and press. You've got 12 repetitions. Reverse lunge and press. So there's a lot going on in this exercise, I know. I want you focused on and thinking about putting your body weight into the front heel. This exercise is actually about the front leg. And of course, we're getting some deltoid action when we press up with the hand. But mentally, I want you thinking about the front leg, putting all your effort and attention there, because that's really what this exercise is about. 12 reps, moving faster or slower, heavier or lighter, based on your ability. One more, and then we're going to immediately do the other side. So switch sides with the dumbbell, and you're going to switch sides, stepping back, start with your knees bent first, into your reverse lunge, and big press. Reverse lunge, big press. Keeping all your energy on that front heel. If stepping back is uncomfortable on your toes, I want you to just take your time and work with your body. You can add a bit of a pause on the back end if you need to, right here to sort of bring your knee down and stabilize yourself. That's okay to do that. Other experts will tell you it's not okay, but it's okay provided you don't bang yourself down on your knee, all right? Totally okay to tap down and pause for a moment if you need to. 12 reps. Going right into that dumbbell side raise. Feet together. Knees soft. Shoulders back and down. Elbow slightly bent. Chin parallel to the ground. Give me a little pause right there. Little pause. So good. Imagine that you're wearing a cape. And you're opening up the cape like that. So you're pressing away from your body, almost as if there was a weight on the top of your hands and you're pressing away. So think of this more as a pressing away 
rather than a lifting up. Try to keep your neck relaxed if you can and really press your shoulders towards your hips. Pressing your shoulders towards your hips and back helps to relieve the neck, to lengthen out the neck so that you're not using the neck muscles. Now, you're probably going to build up a little bit of tension in your neck on an exercise like this. To some degree, that's normal, and that's why a lot of times when you meet someone who's super fit, they tend to have either a vascular neck or um, a defined neck where you see a lot of their tendons. It's kind of par for the course, the more fit you become. And so to some degree, you are using the muscles of your neck when you're working out, right? This little bean pole is holding up this big, huge weight here. And these muscles do get strengthened. The name of the game is to be strengthening the neck muscles appropriately so that you're not straining your neck. But it's, it's valuable to understand the difference between muscular involvement and straining. I hear this a lot from people about the muscles of their lower back. People will email me or private clients will message me or call me and say, you know, I'm feeling this exercise in my back. And there's a big difference between feeling the musculature of your lower back get involved versus sharp acute pain that signals injury. Big difference. You got muscles in your back and you got muscles in your neck. And if you feel them getting involved, that's very different than um, straining those muscles. You ready for round two? Feet together, knees bent, dumbbell in place. If you started with your dumbbell on your left hand, you're going to step back on your left foot. 12 reps. You can eliminate the pause if this exercise is challenging for you. And if you want more of a challenge, bring that knee up, coming right back into your lunge. Big lift. That just makes this exercise a bit more complicated, a bit harder. I almost would rather you go a hair heavy on this exercise and not have to focus on the balance. For today, last week we did this exercise with a balance. It's not that one is better than the other. It's just a different focus. 12 reps, focusing on that front leg. Stepping back to the distance such that when you come down to the bottom, you've got about 90 degrees at both knees, ish, ish, okay? A little less or minus from there. 12 reps, let's immediately go to that other side. Dumbbell at the shoulder, knees are soft to begin, focusing on that front leg, big push, front leg, Again, you might be thinking, well, how do I know if my knees are at 90 degrees when I do this? Either you use a mirror or because your mirror would be at your side, that makes it a little harder to check your technique. So therefore, this is one of those exercises where it's not a bad idea to videotape yourself from the side so that you can start to learn what 90 degrees at your knees feels like. And it does not have to be a perfect 90 degrees. Those of you guys that are perfectionists, those of you that are detail oriented, when I say 90 degrees, I don't mean it has to be a perfect 90 degrees. It could be more or less depending on your body. Okay. Feet together. Here we go. Second set, giving me a pause at the top. Check your wrists. Are your wrists nice and straight? Are they saggy? I'm okay if your wrists are a little lifted. I'd rather them be lifted than dropping. But technically, your wrists should be perfectly straight in alignment with the rest of the arm. You also don't have to pause at the top. Really depends on the weight load you're using. If you want to build your muscle, if you want a bit more muscle definition, if you want your muscles to be a hair bigger, you're actually going to use slightly heavier weights and not pause at the top, okay? Not pausing at the top helps you to really get in and get out of the exercise. So some of you want kind of like the long, lean, toned look. Some of you want to get bigger muscles. In my experience now, 30 years of working with women, 
the vast majority want like long, lean, toned muscles. That's why I really exaggerate and teach a two second pause. But for those of you guys that want to build bigger muscles, you got to use heavier weights. And therefore, there is an argument for eliminating the pause. Last superset, we are going to be doing one of my favorites, which is a little bit a hair complicated. So I'm going to teach you what it is. It's called a Cossack squat. And you're going to start with your feet quite wide, okay? Toes are turned open at about 45 degrees. And you're going to have to play with your positioning here. But your toes are turned open. Dumbbell is at your clavicle, uh, collarbone. You're going to drop into your knees. And you're going to sit over onto one leg. And then immediately come over to the other leg. There's a little bit of an up and down. A little bit of an up and down. But it's kind of like a single leg squat with your toes turned open. It's a lot of inner thigh, a lot of glute, a little balance. Cossack squat. Second exercise, we're going to do um, an exercise that is not at the top of my list of favorites, but it's a great way to hit the triceps when we need to when we're working with dumbbells. So feet together, knees bent, um, elbows start bent. We are going to do alternating tricep kickbacks. If you've been in my community for a while, you know I'm actually a little um, critical of this exercise because I don't find it to be the most effective exercise ever. Um, the most important thing about this exercise when you're doing this is that you're really keeping your shoulders drawn back and down. It's so important. The biggest mistake on this exercise is that a lot of people tend to round their shoulders forward and do it from here. And you actually don't really hit your triceps a whole lot there. You've got to get those shoulders rolled back rolled back and also back in space to really effectively be able to hit your triceps. All right, Cossack squat. Please start with a lighter dumbbell so that you can learn this move. Um, and then if it's comfortable, you can swap it out for a heavier dumbbell. At your chest, feet are kind of wide. Feet turned open to 45 degrees. Bend your knees so that your body weight is on your heels. And you're going to sit over to one side, letting the toe lift. And then let's switch sides. So you've got 12 repetitions on each side. So we're going to do 24 reps in total, right? So here's one, here's two for 24, three, and four for 24, which is 12 on each leg. Count it however you want, but ultimately I want you performing 12 sits on each side. Heavy onto the heel, staying somewhat low. You're going to feel some inner thigh involvement and a bit of a stretch. It definitely challenges your balance a little bit, and you can take your time moving slowly on this exercise. I really love this exercise to hit the glutes, to open up the flexibility, and it also is just a great unilateral exercise because you're able to focus on each leg, right leg, left leg. You can focus on the leg as you sit into it. And 12 on each side, picking up your second dumbbell. A little on the light side for your dumbbells here. Feet together, knees bent, shoulders back. Alternating tricep kickbacks, alternating one at a time, 12 on each side, keeping those shoulders drawn back in space, but also pressed towards your hips. If you're doing this right, you're actually going to feel muscular involvement between your shoulder blades and all the way down to your lower back. So this exercise does involve the triceps, but you're also getting just a lot of posterior activation in general, the upper back, the mid back, trapezius rhomboids, down into the muscles of your lower back. Make sure that you're keeping a little bit of a neutral arch in your lower back. And for those of you guys that are built more like me, 
I tend to have a flattened lower back. And so I actually have to conscientiously give myself a little bit of a booty pop. Pop that booty back. Be an Instagram model. And 12 on each side. Short break before we do our second set. So on that tricep kickback, it's a lot more complicated than you would think. And that's one of the reasons why I don't teach it. Because if you don't really do it properly, you're actually not hitting your triceps all that much. And when you do it properly, it's great because you are able to really learn that neutral lower back arch. And you're really able to learn shoulder retraction and depression. And when you get that, I can literally feel it all the way up and down my back and my triceps. So it's a lot of contracting backward into the body with a little bit of neutral spine. That's a neutral spine. I can't even, I can't overarch because I'm such an underarcher, but that's an overarched lower back. I tend to hang out here with a flattened lower back. So I have a flattened, if you look at my back from my tailbone to my neck, it's flat. And that's actually not ideal. And when experts are telling you keep a flat back, that's like the fastest recipe to a back injury. Been there, done that years and years and years and years and years ago. Short break. Moving on to our second set of Cossack squat. If it was comfortable, go heavier. You could also use two dumbbells and hold them at your shoulders if you prefer. Uh, one is not right. One is not wrong. It's really whatever feels the most productive for you. But I do like to have the dumbbell above the waist on this exercise. You could even hold it at your chest if you wanted to, but ideally just keep it above your waist. So toes are open. Feet are kind of wide to start, and you might even have to reposition a couple of reps in. That's fine. Heavy onto your heels. Here we go. Sitting over, lifting the toe, staying low as you switch sides. Sitting nice and deep and continue heavy onto those heels, lifting that toe. Chest stays up as much as you can. Now it is going to come forward a little bit, but try to keep your chest somewhat lifted so that you're not just bending over into this. We, this is really, in many ways, a goblet squat, a variation of a goblet squat, okay, at the bottom. So you want your tailbone down, but you want your chest lifted a bit. Such a great glute exercise. 12 on each side. And two more-ish, depending on where you are. Great. Pick up that second dumbbell. And we're going into our second set of tricep kickbacks. Feet together, knees bent. Bring those shoulder blades back. Sit into it. Alternating tricep kickback. If you have a mirror, this is one of those exercises where you can check your technique to make sure that you've got curvature in your lower back. If your body isn't responding to your strength workouts the way you want it to, if you feel like you're working out, but you're not seeing results from your workouts, the first thing you want to check is your technique and how you are performing these exercises, because that has a lot to do with how your body develops and responds. The second thing, which is a bit more complicated, if you're not seeing results from your workouts the way that you want, the second thing that you have to look at is your nutrition. And that's where it gets a hair more complicated. Um, but those are the two areas that I really find when women come to me and they're like, I'm working out all the time and I'm eating right, but my body isn't reflecting it. Those are the two things where I first refine and improve how you're performing your exercises, the technique of your exercises, but then taking a look at your nutrition. One more and relax it out. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down. Let's go through a little bit of a cool down. And then if you want to stick around after the workout, we will be doing 
some walking lunges together. If you're watching this in playback and you want to join us for a live workout and you want to join us for the live walking lunge workshop, please visit hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout to sign up and join us. So let's take a big inhale up. Exhale it out. Let's do two more like this. Lengthening your rib cage up to the sky. Exhaling it out one more time. Really lengthen up to the sky. And now exhale, bring your hands back behind you, interlock. And I want you to actively reach your hands away, letting your chest come forward. Then you've got the choice. You can either lift your hands higher or you can bring your hands down by your tailbone, whichever feels a bit more effective for you to trying to get in position so you can see me a little better so that you get an opening through your chest and your shoulders. Because we did so much upper body arm today, I want to make sure that we open up your chest a little teeny tiny bit so that your shoulder girdle relaxes back into its neutral position. Really extend those arms, keep it active, release, hands up back behind your head, interlock your hands, and control your elbows backwards. So as if you were standing with a wall behind you, press your elbows back into the wall, extending your chest out, dropping your shoulders down. And we're going to do a quadricep stretch next, just to make sure we relieve any inflexibility that may have occurred in the quadriceps. Relax it down. If you need to use something for balance, Please find it, whether it's a ball or a chair, whatever it may be. But you're just going to bring your balance onto one leg and bring that back leg up behind you. Now, if this, if you are too restricted in your movement to be able to catch your foot, you can grab your pant leg. You can grab the heel of your shoe. You can also use a belt around your foot. But I want you to come into a quad stretch here. And then keep the standing knee bent. Tuck your pelvis under and then pull the stretching knee back in space. In case you missed it, I had a great feature on Livestrong.com recently that reviewed this exact stretch, how to do it perfectly, how to get the most out of this exercise. If you just go to Livestrong.com and you search Holly Perkins, you're going to see all of the articles that I've contributed to there. They are good friends of mine, and they are reaching out to me weekly for information and guidance on exercise and nutrition. So if you want to learn more about this stretch, check out that article because we really went in depth and relax. Same thing on the other side. Um, bend into the leg that you're standing on so that you keep that supporting leg slightly bent because as I said earlier in the workout, that is what unlocks the hip. And this stretch is about, we're stretching the quadricep, which is the muscle in the front of your thigh of this leg that we're, we're bending into. Um, so even though we're stretching the quadricep, the truth is the quadricep inserts up above your hip. And so your hip positioning matters when you're stretching your quadriceps. So you want to tuck your pelvis under and you want to pull the knee back slightly so that you can really get into that quadricep. But also the standing knee needs to be slightly bent. There we go slightly bent because that releases your pelvis so that you can get in and stretch this quadricep a little bit better. It's also great for training your balance. And relax one last deep inhale. Ah, exhale it out. Thank you so much for joining me for this awesome workout. I hope to see you live next time. And if you're sticking around after the workout, let's do some walking lunges.